I've mentioned before that my teenage crush on Sally Field persists to this very day. So how could I not dive headfirst into an episode called With Love from Irving? It's a beautiful spring day and Sister Bertrill is out flying for the sheer fun of it. It was a perfect day. At any rate, it started out that way. How this day ended is something else. Best she can tell, it landed on a beach not far below. Better go look for it. Oh, it's got to be here someplace. Now, if it fell directly down, allowing for wind, airspeed, drift... Uh... Hi! It has an injured leg. She uses her handkerchief to bandage it up. Oh, gosh. I gotta hurry. See you later. So long, Irving. We don't know when or why she named him Irving, but if the pelican doesn't work out and she really wants a sidekick named Irving, <clears throat> of course, now I want to know if that was Sally Field working with that bird or if they actually got her a stand-in. At the convent, they're welcoming a visiting dignitary, Father Sweeney. What sort of dignitary is he and what sort of dignitarying does he do? He's a big whale. Wheel. <laughs> Father Sweeney is the administrator from the newly merged colleges of Saints Bernard and Boniface. They're going co-educational and the Reverend Mother will be in charge of hundreds of girls. She's to head the den of women. There's a rumor to the effect that she's a candidate for the dean of women. In other words, she'd be leaving. They're supposed to be on their best behavior so the father gets the best possible impression of her so that he can take away the leader that they've all learned to love and depend on so much. I'm not sure I'd be able to get behind that. Sister Betril, I believe it is your turn to say grace. Of course, Reverend Mother. We ask, O oh Lord, that you bless this food and that our humble plates be filled with the... <coughs> <laughs> That could have gone better. In the classroom, she's having the kids sing for the father. Hello, Captain from Verdanko. How are you today? Thank you, sir. I'm very well. I must be on my way. I'm on my All way. in. All I'm in. in. That's enough. Uh, Pedro, we're singing in the key of G, not A flat. No, he's another, mana. Translation, I didn't do anything. It'll take her a moment to realize it was Irving. Hello, Captain from Virginia. How are you today? Thank you, sir. The following year, Pedro and Irving formed a group and hit the circuit. They released three hit singles before creative differences sent them their separate ways. It's the middle of the night, and Irving has brought Sister Bertrill a nice selection of seashells. Now he's serenading me. That's a serenade? Uh, seems to be part of a program of harassment. I, mean, I don't think harassment is the right word. No, what? Try courting. Courting. He serenades you? He brings you gifts? Gifts? Fish? Fish? Seashells? Seashells? What are you getting at? Irving is in love with you. <laughs> Irving is a bird! What do you think Irving thinks you are? Hey Irving, I saw her first. It'll take him long enough to come up with a solution to this dilemma. But of course, we have to find a substitute for you, Sister Bear Trill. Oh, well, that's fine with me. In other words, another pelican. A mate for Irving. Is that plausible? Reverend Mother, I think you've come up with an ingenious solution. And I must commend you for your approach to a most delicate situation. He thinks she's being humble when she says it's all in a day's work at this place. A local guy comes up with four females. Josephine, Gertrude, and Angeline are all rejects. But Emma Lou is another matter. Before he left, Father Sweeney officiated his weirdest wedding ever. Oh, what a snappy-looking group. What happened? Somebody drop a bomb? In a manner of speaking, Father Sweeney just left. And? I'm afraid the Reverend Mother didn't cut it. He's not recommending her for the appointment. She looks so very sad. I think we blew it. 
I couldn't say it any better, Sister Sisto. Sister Bertrill is thinking, not we. I blew it. Reverend Mother? Yes, Sister Bertrill, what is it? I, I heard you didn't get the appointment. Yes, that is correct. It's my fault. It's all my fault. Well, one could say that you had something to do with Father Sweeney's decision. She feels awful. She says, we would have missed you so badly, but we know how much this meant to you, too. And you would have been good at it. There didn't seem to be any question as to my qualifications. The Roses did exceptionally well this year. I don't understand. Father Sweeney felt that under the circumstances, I should remain here. He's pretty sure nobody else he knows could handle what goes on here. Of course, I have no choice in the matter. I go where I am directed to go. But when he told me what his recommendation was, it was the happiest news I could hear. That's right, young novice. You're off the hook. In fact, you were never on it. I love it here at Santanco. Even with me here? Most specifically with you here. Sister Bertrill, do you not agree that the most gratifying reward in life is to feel one is needed? Remember I mentioned how much the others love and depend on her? Sister Bertrill has the enthusiasm. Reverend Mother Placido has the wisdom. It's a symbiosis. Together, they're unstoppable and they can change the world. This episode has more than its share of good gags and silly moments, but at its heart, it's a reversal of what we usually see. Ordinarily, we see Sister Bertrill rescuing someone from themselves and setting them on a better path. Today, she's the one who needed rescuing, not from Irving, but from guilt and self-doubt. There's nobody more qualified to make that happen than the Reverend Mother who lives up to the mother part of her title where her flying novice is concerned. One of the most amazing things about this story is how we went from Irving's wedding to this tear-inducing scene so seamlessly. The writing continues to be that rare combination of silly and brilliant. The other thing you can see in this scene is the genuine affection these two actors have for each other. I don't think Madeline Sherwood needed to do any acting to deliver that line about feeling needed. By this time, the show was a huge hit. We tuned in to see Sally Field, but we got the bonus of great stories, outstanding supporting cast, and gags that are genuinely funny. On the April 1st after the show began, TV Guide ran some spoof listings, including one that said, The Flying Nun. This is the heart-cooling story of a nun who says she can fly, and the first episode she is told to stay out of the sacramental wine. When TV Guide went after you like that, you knew you'd hit the big time. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button to let me and YouTube know you want to see more. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the mask here and get signed up so you don't miss a thing, because something is always happening here at Irving Zoo. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Hey Irving, I saw her first. It'll take them long enough to come with blah, 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 blah. Josephine, Gertrude, Angeline. Okay, by that. <clears throat> Irving's wedding to this tear-inducing scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the other thing you can see is in... Ah, damn it! This episode has its share of... Oh, man, come on, David. Good grief.